So let's finish our lecture dealing with how we analyze a system as it changes phase. As we increase the temperature or increase the pressure or decrease the pressure or decrease the temperature, what are the phases that we can expect? So let's recap from what we discussed last lecture. In last lecture, we showed that initially, for and here's a temperature specific volume or a TV diagram, and we have constant pressure lines, which are these dashed lines, and we have a vapor dome, which shows when it intersects with our constant pressure line, both the saturated liquid and the saturated vapor lines. So initially we'll have a compressed liquid when our temperature is lower. As we increase the temperature, and I'm going to follow it for this particular pressure, as we increase the temperature, we'll reach a saturated liquid point. So the fluid that we're dealing with is about to begin to vaporize. We continue to add temperature to the fluid or our system. And that system starts using that energy to change phase of that liquid into a vapor. And here we have a mixture of both a saturated liquid and saturated vapor up to this point where then we have a saturated vapor. If we continue to heat it, so we no longer have liquid at this point, if we continue to heat it, we'll have a superheated vapor in this region. All right, and there's some interesting things to look at. For example, if we look at what's called the supercritical pressure, if we increase our pressure past the point where past the critical pressure, we'll notice that there's no no distinct phase change region. So here's our typically expected graph where we have a latent heat of vaporization. So this middle part here, that's flat, that doesn't change temperature, despite increasing the amount of energy in our system. When we increase the pressure past the critical point, we bypass this. And this has some applications in the energy industry. And we can talk about that more specifically and those applications that agencies like the Department of Energy are interested in. How can we utilize, when we eliminate this phase change region, how can we utilize this type of um, fluid uh, behavior curve? Likewise, we can plot these graphs on a pressure specific volume diagram, or we could call this a PV diagram. So in the PV diagram, we may have lines of constant pressure, and as we decrease the pressure here for this constant temperature, as we decrease the pressure, we'll see that we begin to have a, again, a vapor, a saturated vapor, and as we uh, move along this line, we'll have a saturated liquid vapor. As we reach this point here, we'd have a saturated vapor. And as we continue to decrease the pressure, we then see that we have a uh, superheated vapor in this region. So it's similar to our TV diagram, but you'll see that these curves are kind of inverted here, these constant temperature curves and we can use them interchangeably to describe the process that we're dealing with. Although these TV diagrams are more commonly used. We can also extend our graphs to describe not only vapor and liquid phases but solid phases as well. So we can, if we look past this this liquid phase or this below our saturated liquid phase will be looking at what happens when we have a solid liquid 
or just a solid. Now in our course we will not be addressing addressing the solid phases or the latent heat of fusion and as a disclaimer I may or may not have a problem on the latent heat of fusion but it will be a conceptual problem as we will not be focusing in on the uh, solid phase change and this is mainly because in many power generation applications we simply do not deal with solids um, commonly when we're talking about a steam turbine or we're talking about a gas turbine there are certain applications certainly when we have a solid and that solid uh, does become a liquid and may become a vapor in the uh, process but by and large we may be talking about steam and we may be talking about air in our power generation systems therefore we will not focus uh, and spend very much time on that another point or another word that you may see is sublimation so sublimation occurs when a solid directly turns to a vapor form bypassing the liquid phase so um, this typically occurs at low pressures below the triple point and here you see a, a P T diagram showing the different phase transitions as um, this solid begins to sublimate. So I think by now you're kind of getting the idea that this is a three-dimensional, if we really wanted to look at it, we would plot it in three dimensions. So we could look at the PV diagram, we could look at the TV diagram, all simultaneously to get a big picture of what's going on but because it's difficult or it's more difficult it requires a little bit more thinking to interpret one of these graphs we are going to stick with thinking about these processes in two dimensions but in in reality you can plot these in three dimensions and we can look at it as it varies both with temperature pressure and volume but again, we'll focus with on PV and TV diagrams. So we'll continue our next lecture having to do with quality. We're going to stay in Chapter 4, and we will continue to discuss different properties of pure substances.